What's going on ladies and gents, boys and girls, guardians of all ages, Joker back again, once again, and here we are again with another soulless holiday event. <sighs> Why are we still here? Just to suffer. So the dawning is here, Bungie's most recent soulless corporate cash shop event. One of many, that said, at least with Festival of the Cost, Bungie had the decency to change the main event that we interact with. The dawning event is bereft of meaning or sincerity. At best, it's a lifeless time sink. At worst, it's an exploitative cash shop event that predates on players' fear of missing out. And as I sat there baking cookies for a chance at weapons I don't even care about because none of them are better than what I have or even new, I thought to myself, why am I here? Why am I going through the motions of playing an event that doesn't respect my time, that Bungie cares so little about, that I could have just re-uploaded my video from last year and it would have largely still been relevant. Relevant. And then think about the insanity in that. I'm putting more effort into scripting, recording, editing, and uploading this video than Bungie did with their reused, recycled cash shop event. Now, you can argue that the 30th anniversary is going on right now, but that too is largely a cash grab. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but let's be honest about what this is all about. Let's not pretend that the cash shop wasn't filled to the brim with new loot all while asking players to spend $25 on a dungeon that was sold separately. And hey, content costs money. Fine, fair enough. But that doesn't mean it has to be soulless or exploitative. I think because a lot of this is monetized or tied to monetization, we should expect more in terms of quality. And that's really what we're here to talk about. Not necessarily the cash shop, not really the monetization. Those things we've covered at nauseum. And while they are a part of the conversation because they're a part of the event, that's not really the grievance here. Destiny holiday events are kind of a microcosm of the game itself and all of its problems. From season to season or DLC to DLC, you have some slightly new content or slightly changed and repackaged content like Horde Mode 355 released alongside a cash shop update where clearly more effort went into the cash shop and creating content for that than into the event or season itself. I mean, we have how many different horde modes, not horde modes that are basically the exact same thing at this point. Kill a bunch of enemies, throw a ball someplace, get a ball, gather a ball, sit on a ball, shit on a ball. It's, it's just so redundant at this point. So when the dawning comes around and it's literally just recycled content with a cash shop full of items, I have to ask, after all of these years, is this really a surprise anymore? Is this really shocking? Sure, I could review it, but that would also be kind of redundant. You, the audience, have already made up your mind. Some will agree with everything I have to say. Some will hate me for not understanding how brilliant the dawning is, because they get to give cookies to Smallin now. Lately, and I know some of you are going to be tired of me bringing this up, I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy XIV, the 14th game in a franchise that started out as a swan song, a Final Fantasy, a franchise that has most definitely had its ups and downs, its exploitations, and its abject failures. Final Fantasy XIV being chief among those failures. And yet, Final Fantasy XIV has gone from abject failure to winning awards for the best community and the best still playing, and suffering so much from success that they literally had to stop selling the game. For as much as people want to whinge when I compare Destiny to Final Fantasy, they're actually far more alike than I think a lot of people want to admit. More so Destiny fanboys, because it's always going to be an unflattering comparison. But look at the journey both games have gone through. Both 1.0 versions of the games were failures, and the teams either set about fixing them or rebooting their respective franchises. And I mean, technically speaking, there's a version of Destiny 1 that was almost completed, but then, in the 11th hour had to be entirely rebooted. So it's not like these teams don't understand the heartbreak of spending years developing a game only to release it and it's terrible. But both franchises would see redemption with the release of their first main expansion, Heaven's Ward for Final Fantasy and Taken King. 
for Destiny. The key difference between both studios, between Final Fantasy XIV and Destiny, is where Final Fantasy XIV continued to improve its craft, Bungie and Destiny did not. Bungie and Destiny would continue to make the same mistakes they made with Destiny 1. Destiny 2's journey is largely the exact same as Destiny 1's. An 11th hour reboot, spending years fixing the game again. Hell, that's one of the biggest reasons people don't want a Destiny 3. Imagine that. Imagine that being the reason that people don't want Destiny 3. Because they are so terrified that Bungie's going to fuck it that's what they did with Destiny 1. That's what they did with Destiny 2. Sure, sunsetting sucks. Sure, Destiny 2 could be better. Sure, Bungie could fix a lot of things with the Destiny 3. But more likely than not, they're going to fuck it up. And when that's a general consensus in the player base, when settling for it's bad, but it could be worse is the mentality, well, do I need to say more? There's not a confidence within the community that Bungie could even pull off a Destiny 3. And their expansion since Forsaken hasn't really done much to bolster any confidence. I think most people will agree there's a big difference between, eh, that was an okay expansion, I paid 40 bucks for it, I got 4 or 5 hours of content out of it, now I'm gonna go farm loot, and, ooh, you want me to start over and spend $60 to do so. You gotta knock it out of the park. And given my comment sections and other people's comment sections, most people don't seem to believe that Bungie has the capacity to do that. So as I sat there grinding out materials to make cookies for loot that's largely irrelevant, I asked myself, why am I doing this? Destiny is, after all, Skinner's box. So if the loot isn't worth it, or if what you have is already better, then what's the point? It's all just kind of meaningless. There's no story to experience, nothing new or exciting to play. Even the Dares of Eternity is just another horde mode. Sure, it has some of the most fantastic presentation of any piece of Destiny content ever, but that's it. And things don't always have to be new and shiny, but they do have to have a point. Is anybody really engaged with an event about farming enemy kills so you can turn them into cookies? just going to waste your time dismantling them? Is anybody really looking forward to doing that? Or how about grinding away to get what? A bunch of weapons that are by no stretch of the imagination best in slot? The fusion rifle used to be a king, keyword, used to, and all of it is recycled from years past. Is anybody actually excited to grind that shit out? Or are most people looking at it the exact same way I'm looking at it? This is just kind of a passive, off to the side loot grind to do while you're doing other things. It's not really an event, it's just something that's there. Vestigial. Now let's contrast that real quick to Final Fantasy XIV and some of its recycled events, like the Nocturne for Heroes, which is a crossover between Final Fantasy XIV and Final Fantasy XV that has only been used three times, between 2019 and 2021. One, there's a story for the event. I know, right? An hour to an hour and a half narrative for a crossover event in my MMO? Gasp! Shock! Horror! Lightning crackle, lightning crackle, lightning crackle! For reference, the entire narrative for a Destiny season is between an hour to two hours stretched out over three months. There's an exclusive public event to this event, and there's a lot of loot. Noctis's outfit, hair, and car. Cars? In my fantasy game? Or how about the annual Make It Rain campaign, an event in Final Fantasy XIV that, unlike other seasonal events, isn't based on a real-world counterpart, being themed after the Gold Saucer, which, since 2016, has had a different quest storyline every year. And while this quest and its rewards are novel, the biggest draw to the casino during this campaign is the fact that all winnings are increased by 50%, on top of some of the regular Gold and Saucer rewards having huge discounts. I mean, look, you can be a playboy bunny girl. Well, being a bunny girl if you make a bunny girl bunception. Oh yeah, that's something else I should mention. The Golden Saucer has a bunch of minigames, from chocobo breeding and racing, to triple triad, to weekly fashion reports. Once again, I don't say any of this to be Little Destiny or Bungie or the people that love this game, only to point out that it could be better. Only to illustrate that 
if Bungie ever chose to make Destiny more than a soulless corporate cash-in, overly monetized and minimally viable, if they cared more about the player experience than psychologically manipulating the player with FOMO skins and Skinner boxes, then Destiny could truly, truly be really great. And yeah, the little things matter. It starts with the little things. The big things should be great. Why are we paying money if they're not? But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Remember to like, but only if you did. Subscribe for more. Feel free to donate to my Patreon if you're feeling particularly generous. But above all else, stay frosty.